Hey everybody, Stu here from Sierra Sewing, Quilting and Vacuums, and today we are gonna talk about how to put borders on quilts. So this is my quilt that I'm ready for borders. I've actually got an inner border that will go on, which is the darker blue, and then an outer border, which is the lighter blue. So I've cut all my strips, I've sewn them together. So now it's time to add them to my quilt. And I know the temptation is always to just start at one end, sew it on, whack it off when I get to the other side. But what happens is we all know that fabric stretches a little bit differently as you sew it. So if I do that, I'm awful likely to get one side longer than the other. And when it's all said and done, what happens is the borders start to kind of have this ruffly effect and your quilter will be very unhappy with you. <laughs> so. Anyway, I'm gonna show you what you need to do to keep you nice square borders. So I've got this one. Again, all sewn together, big long strand of spaghetti, and I've actually got a double layer here. So I've got folded in half, so when the time comes, I'm gonna cut two at a time. And I'm gonna measure each side of my quilt. So I am going to come down. I've got my 120 inch tape measure. And I'm just gonna run that down one side of my quilt. Like come down here, nice and flat. And this measures to be right at 92 and a half. And I've already measured the other side. And amazingly enough, it also measured 92 and a half. But in case yours doesn't exactly match, you can kind of take the average of the two. And I've heard some people also measure down the middle. I find that it's most off in the middle. So that kind of skews my averages. So I've kind of taken to just do the um, right and the left side. And that's usually a pretty good average. So I'm gonna go with 92 and a half. If you had one that measured 92, one that measured 93, again, go down the middle, take it 92 and a half. And you can fudge in a half an inch of variance um, on your when you start to pin your borders on. Now I'm going to scoot this out of the way and now I'm going to measure my actual border. I'm going to start here. I'm going to start measuring here. Make sure that this is nice and flat. Spread that out. And we're measuring to 92 and a half. I'm gonna scoop that down just a little bit because I'm almost off of my map. 92 and a half is gonna be right there. Try not to cut your tape measure in half. I get really cranky when I do that. It wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> 92 and a half. When I look at my my ruler here, and I've got my cute little Sierra sewing ruler, which is perfect for this kind of stuff. I'm going to just make sure that the line on my ruler is even with the edge of that border. So I know when I'm cutting it, I have a 90 degree angle. And that makes the perfect cut. Okay. So since I had a double layer, I have both the left and the right sides cut. They're exactly the same size and ready to go. I will save this for when I do my top and bottom. Set that aside. And now you absolutely want to make sure that you pin it on there. So I'm going to find the edge. This is a batik, so I got to make sure that I have my seam allowance going the right way. And I'm going to match up this edge. I am going to pin Oh, a couple blocks worth. And I know there are those out there that don't like to pin, but this will save you a whole lot of headache when it's all said and done. So I'm gonna pin a little ways, then I'm gonna skip to the other side. This is a nice long quilt. <laughs> skip to the other end and make this edge match. And then work my way to the middle. And that way, if there is any fullness that I need to work out, 
It's gonna happen in the middle and not at the end of my quilt. There's nothing more frustrating than sewing down the way and then I get to the end and I got three inches of quilt and six inches of borders left over. That is never fun. So I'm gonna continue pinning and again, just work any fullness that comes out will be here in the middle and I can always kind of stretch or screw it up if I need to. So anyway, I'm going to continue pinning. Then when the time comes to sew, I can just sew it straight down and I'll do the same on both sides. Then I'll press it out toward the border. Then I'm going to remeasure the top and bottom just like I did before. I can't measure the top and bottom until after I get that, um, the side border sewn on because now the measurement has changed. I'll repeat that process with the top and bottom. Then I'm gonna go through the whole scenario again with my outside border. And it seems like a lot of work, a lot of trouble, but it really does pay off in the end because it's gonna give you a nice flat quilt that's even and nice and square. And again, your quilter will appreciate you. <laughs> so anyway, that's how we do borders and we will talk to you soon. Thanks so much.